she goes, uh, yeah, we have uh, sparkling fountains because uh, flat water is uh, so boring. I mean, it's flat, it's boring, uh, nothing happens. So we made uh, sparkling fountains and uh, we have uh, champagne fountains as well for uh, the Rondes <laughs> and uh, croissant uh, dropping from the sky using drones. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's the bare minimum for France. Uh, what do you guys have in America? <laughs> Uh, for a year and a half, the Guns. head of the EPA was a guy who'd spend his life trying to eliminate it. I don't know. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to God Awful Movies, where each week we watch another terrible movie so you don't have to. I'm your host, Heath Enright, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, welcome back. Thanks, Heath. You know who's a great thought leader? Who's that? Star of High School Musical, Zac Efron. Zachary <laughs> yeah. Efron. Want to hear answer. more <laughs> of his opinions? <laughs> yep, we're gonna, whether we like it or not. <laughs> And sitting somewhere to the north of a line I'm legally not allowed to cross because I live in a shithole country is veteran <laughs> guest maskist, professional science communicator, award-winning skeptical podcaster, and guy who insisted on being introduced as the man who continues to replace Noah. Jonathan <laughs> Jerry is here. Double J, welcome back. Hey, uh, th thank you guys for, for having me back. Yeah, I mean, I... Each time I'm on the show, Noah isn't here. And I, I just suspect that uh, your listeners will think that this is like a Jekyll and Hyde situation, that like I'm this like scientist, but then when I do cannabis, I turn into Noah. That is not the case. It's not what's happening. I don't maybe know. one day maybe one day we'll be on the same show. At QED, <laughs> I never saw you in the same room. Ooh. Mm -hmm. There's only one way to find out, which is blow pot smoke in Jonathan's <laughs> face if you ever see him. <laughs> <laughs> Hot drugs in his desk at his university. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> That's how Noah morphs. We all know that. So <clears throat> tell us, Jonathan, what are we going to be breaking down today? We watched The Goop Lab, testosterone edition. <laughs> <laughs> Better known as <sighs> Down to Earth with Zac Efron. <laughs> yeah, and it's a new travelogue miniseries on Netflix that promises to explore environmental solutions and exotic fruits that cure cancer in equal measures. <laughs> uh, we, they keep their promises. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, they do. We uh, specifically watched episode two, France, to make sure Eli could annoy us with his horrible French accent. Yes, I can. All right. <laughs> Don't remind him about stuff. And Eli... How bad was this movie in an American accent? <laughs> well, if you love goop, but it's all a little too science-based and heady for you, you <laughs> will love this movie. It's like the ums on the Joe Rogan podcast got together and made a travelogue. That's this movie, <laughs> TV show. <laughs> and is there anything you guys would like to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, so just to sort of lay out the playing field here so everyone understands what the fuck is going on, I was going to go with best worst reason to make a TV show. Now look, Goop is a business, right? It's an evil bad business, but I understand why it resulted in a TV show. Down to Earth is just Zac Efron has a stupid friend, the show. <laughs> The sh this is like if all of a sudden Netflix made four episodes about your cousin who fell for an MLM. Why is this television? What happened? And the, the <laughs> friend is the worst. I hate him He's so goddamn worst. much. His name's Darren, and I, I, I'm furious every time I see him. He's the <laughs> worst. He's the worst starting at his name. Yep. Starting at being named Darren. <laughs> D-A-R-I-N, Darren. <laughs> Fuck you. God. By the way, by the way, you may think he's Californian. He's actually from Minnesota. Oh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I hate him more, maybe? I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I'm going to go with best, best, actually. Best, best cameo from Anna Kendrick. Hell yeah. <laughs> she is fucking amazing. She just, she just spends her entire time passive aggressively roasting their stupid fucking show <laughs> and they don't know it it's the best we'll get to it in a second she's in like one of the first couple scenes yeah yeah for me it's it's being the tv version of that eco-friendly vegan food store you like to go to because they have really cool stuff but then you see that they sell homeopathic arnica and you're like ah, oh, <laughs> that's a shame come yeah. on don't yep. dilute the arnica 
And then you tear their vax poster and you have to stop going there. Yeah, I know exactly yeah, yeah. what you're talking about, Jonathan. <laughs> All right. Well, apparently we're going to learn about France and medical science from the star of High School Musical. So I'm going to need a minute to consume a few substances that Zac Efron isn't allowed to anymore. Carbs? <laughs> yep, carbs. And then we'll be back to tell you all about Down to Earth, Episode 2, France. Um, hello? Mr. Netflix? Oh, hi, Zach. Uh, come on in. Um, also, I, I'm not Mr. Netflix. I'm also here, bro. <laughs> me, me too. Oh, um, hello. You must be Zach's father. Ha! <laughs> he wishes. I really do. So, look, bro. Let me cut straight to the jibby jabby. We want to make a TV show about shit and stuff. You want to make a TV show about shit and stuff? Shit and he, stuff. He gets it. Yep, yep. We're gonna go places like do stuff, like shit and stuff. Zach will pay, obvi. Uh, but you're gonna pay me back, right? You saying I'm a welcher, bro? No, no. I, I would, I would never say you're a welcher. Oh no, exactly, bra. Exactly. So, uh, Mr. Netflix, uh, what do you think? Honestly. I'm thinking a barely charismatic grifter has his hooks in a child actor, and it would be criminally irresponsible to have anything to do with it. Oh. Mm. But, uh, you know, what with COVID, uh, we, I mean, we're just burning through materials. So, uh, yeah, you can have eight episodes. Nice, bruh. Hooray. <laughs> Let's go celebrate with some drinks on Zach. Yeah. Wait, what? And we're back. And the cold open to this one basically says, please do a god-awful movies episode about us. <laughs> right away, we get church bells and we get Zac Efron walking in slow-mo with Kevin fucking Sorbo. And I was like, what is happening? Turns out it's actually not Kevin Sorbo, but it looks just like it. That was my experience. I was like, all right, we're doing it. We're doing it. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing the god-awful movies tomorrow. He looks like Kevin Sorbo's beach body after picture, but not in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy's rough. That's Darren. We're going to get to him in a second. But we start off somewhere in Europe. <laughs> Zac Efron says that on the VO. We're somewhere yeah. <laughs> in Europe. He's not willing to risk being any more specific than somewhere on that continent. Uh, they're in the witness protection program at this point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they're going to meet with... Dr. Alessandro de Francisis. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this whole scene is amazing because one of the producers asked them to keep quiet because they're, they're chatting like just before they're about to, to go live. And, and so they're, the producers are asking them to keep quiet for a second so he can check the levels on Zach's mic. And Alessandro, he just loses it. <laughs> That's the best. Why would he you say are, that? You're stronzo. You're stronzo. I was telling a story. Unique in the world. And you interrupt me with your microphone and your cameras. Do you even know who I am? I am a former politician from Italy who was condemned by a court of auditors to pay the equivalent of $185,000 for tax damage in the Wait, context really? of a bankruptcy. It's very complicated. It is only available Amazing. in Italian and you have to use a Google Translate to understand. That is why I am walking out of the room. He gets so fucking angry. It's amazing. They're such assholes, so I get it. But yeah, he's like, I'm Alessandro the fucking Francisus. Who, how dare you? And he is the head doctor at the number one spiritual healing shrine in the world. That's where we are, <laughs> apparently. They, they have rankings of that. This is the number one oh. healing shrine. And what a tease, by the way, because they won't come back to this guy again until the end of the episode. They just yep. show him freaking out like Christian Bale on a guy trying to hang up some sound <laughs> yes. equipment. And then we have to wait 40 <laughs> more minutes until this guy hauls out his binder of lies. It's such a tease. <laughs> right, uh. so they try to figure this out while they apologize to the doctor off camera about Zach asking about where to buy cocaine. They cut away to their intro. So they're in Paris. That That's the somewhere in Europe. <laughs> Paris, France. And Zach says, we came to the culinary capital of the world to study water. I feel, I feel, I feel like the, the verb study is doing a lot of lifting here. <laughs> yeah. I gave him a lot of extra credit there. They're going to Talk about water, technically. He says, we came to the culinary capital of the world to learn about the most important food, 
water. Fuck, that's the only one that uh, isn't. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Zach says in, in voiceover, our bodies are between 50 and 65% water. Now, remember that range because it will be contradicted in about a few minutes. <laughs> right away. Right the fuck away. They'll say a different number, yeah. Also, seems like a wide margin. Like, am I 65% water and someone thinner is 50? You are way more mango than water. Way more mango sure. nectar than water. Yeah. It's true. Most certainly. Yeah, and so Darren Sorbo tells Zach, there's some real science to all that stuff that I have distorted and uh, taken out of context and poorly cobbled together in my book that the show's about to plug. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you know, and this is I don't know who drew the molecules during the explanation about water and oxygen. There's a little like infographic that pops up, but H2O is represented as one big ball with two smaller balls attached to it. And it's fine. And <laughs> O2, O2, the, the oxygen molecule, which is literally two identical atoms of oxygen bound together. It's one big ball attached to one small ball. <laughs> so in a nutshell, this pseudoscientific illustration is a summary of what we're about to watch. <laughs> it's, it's that big oxygen conspiracy sneak yes. it's, it's It's eating its twin in the womb. It's like drawing energy from the other oxygen atom. Yeah. But uh, they're basically saying like, okay, we all know that water has hydrogen and oxygen, but does it have magic? And this is one of many times where the movie asks itself a question and Zac Efron asks himself on the VO a question. And then he's like, great question. I don't know. <laughs> Good job. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just an actor. Yeah. I was in like 14 going on 40 or whatever. And now I don't know. <sighs> now I grew a beard. <laughs> I sure hope no one puts me on TV. Cut to Darren. Cut to Darren. So yeah. <laughs> He's pretty, right? Yeah. So now, now we meet Darren officially. This is the guy I thought was Kevin Sorbo. He is a guru of healthy living and superfoods. He's a guru of each of those things separately. Yeah. There's, there's, there's a choice quote from the credit sequence that you're, you're talking about uh, where he says, that's Mother Earth, brah. Like, that's all you need to know about the show. That's, that's a tagline. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Sums it right up. So they say guru of healthy living and superfoods. And then they cut to a shot of Darren holding a comically oversized piece of fruit, like a giant, <laughs> giant prickly pear or something like the size of his body. So Zac Efron clearly thinks superfood means like really big food. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to a so county good. fair. Oh my God, it's a super pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So then they explain the show. They're traveling the world to look for really big fruit and <laughs> healthy living. So, Jonathan, can you tell us a little about this guy, Darren, aside from the fact that he looks like a surf instructor whose divorce <laughs> talked him out of his job? <laughs> he actually is divorced. But he is, uh, so, so yeah. So, the, he is. so his name is Darren Olean, and he wrote a book called Super Life, which, which Zach points out in every opening credits. Like, you could say he wrote the book about this, literally. And then there's a shot of the cover. And I would invite listeners to read from the generous sample of the book that is available for free on Amazon. <laughs> and you will see that this whole show is like a bait and switch for him because he appears relatively level-headed on TV. And I do say relatively. But, compared but, to Zac Efron, yeah. it's easy? No, compared to the book, because in his book, oh my God, the garbage, the nonsense, there's just so much of it. Oh, oh. God. But you, you guys know what would have been like a more honest intro to this TV show? Hi, I'm Zac Efron. You may remember me from Dirty Grandpa, Baywatch, and your teenage daughter's bedroom wall. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for meaning in my life, and I saw that all of my co-stars had shacked up with their own personal gurus. So when I saw a guy selling puka shell necklaces in the parking lot of the Whole Foods on Ventura Boulevard in Encino, <laughs> I thought... <laughs> If Netflix has enough cash flow to finance a Gwyneth Paltrow documentary about psychics, I'm sure they'll pay for me and the Puka Shell guy to travel the world in search of Kamu Kamu. This <laughs> is down to earth on my knees with my hand to find water with Zac Efron and the guy who says hi to me with a shaka sign and calls me brah. <laughs> yup, this is where they drop the title. They're like, yeah. all right, we're traveling the world to look for magic and enormous fruit. Down to Earth. It's I was, time to get down I was to gonna Earth. say the irony of this show being called Down to Earth is almost too much. It might as well be called <laughs> still relevant and talking to our stepkids. 
I, I would actually watch an alternate version of the show called Down to the Better Angels of Our Nature with Zac Efron and Steven Pinker, <laughs> where they, <laughs> they don't travel the world, but they go to Flint and they go to Minneapolis. And Pinker tells Zac that things here are just so much better than they were 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you want to read my Harper letter? No. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they definitely pitched that show and started making it. They yeah. landed on this, though. This was the better thing they landed on. <laughs> So, yeah, they're about to leave for France, but first they're going to stop at a French restaurant in Los Angeles, basically just so they can drag Anna Kendrick into doing a cameo and tasting a flight of waters with them or something stupid like that. Now, I wrote that down as a joke. I was like, oh, they're talking about water. They're going to a fancy restaurant. They're going to have like a flight of water and then cut to them having a flight of water from literally America's first Water sommelier. <laughs> yeah, and so so Anna, Anna is pitch perfect because she, clearly she got dragged there by Zach, Fantastic. who probably told her that <laughs> he was on a spiritual quest and he had nailed a Netflix series and he just wanted her to taste some water on camera. And they, they taste different ones. And Anna, to her credit, goes, you know, I bet they're all the same and this is an episode about the power of suggestion. And if that's the case, well, <laughs> egg on my face, I guess. Which is so, so nice. nice. That's such a nice way to say this is bullshit. I recognize this is bullshit, but we're on TV and you'll cry. And you're all so dumb that you won't get what I just said. So you won't cry, but I still said it. So there you go. Yeah. So good. And so this sommelier explains that like he never touches purified water. It's all about the minerals, the naturally occurring amazing minerals in water. And then he says that water looks for minerals and pulls them out of your body. If it's purified, the water doesn't have any minerals, so it seeks them out and steals them from you, but it's still in your, your body. So the minerals move, I guess. I don't know. Is that what happens, John? Okay, Does so, the water so, steal your fucking minerals? So this is the part that pisses me off, okay? Because the, the, the sommelier, uh, Martin, from Germany, he argues that the more crap there is in your water, the better it is for your health. And he says, purified water, don't drink it. Now, Darren, the guru, he's there. He's sitting through this whole thing. He's nodding along. He's an executive producer on the show. In his book, Darren argues for the exact opposite. He claims that water with too many solids is bad for you because it can't enter your cells. Quote, what, what? does that, yeah, quote, <laughs> what does that leave us? Distilled water. That, in my view, he writes, is the safe way to go. The only truly clean water. It's almost like it doesn't matter what garbage you sell, even if it's contradictory. You can be friends with people like that because you're both outside the mainstream trying to sell your wares to gullible people. Okay, so he pictures water with minerals like, slamming into the cell wall and just being like, mm, oh, it's too, <laughs> too fun. It's yeah, not quite can't, permeable can't, enough for me. Yeah, no, he's he's got a, a, a water uh, distillation apparatus at his home so they can drink distilled water. Fantastic. But let, uh, let's talk about the sommelier, okay? Martin Riese. Let's please, yes. You know, the, the filet mignon pairs very well with this Evian 1983. <laughs> would, you like to, would you like to sniff the cork? But honestly, I mean, this guy understands gigging, okay? He found a niche that nobody was occupying and he nailed it. He was like, I'm going to be the water guy. And he's been in National Geographic. He's been in Men's Health, The Atlantic, and God on, and on really? Bill, Bill Nye Saves the World on Netflix, where he refuses to drink one water, claiming that it's not natural because it comes from a factory. Now, I, I have, I have, yeah, not making this up. You can check this out. One of those hydrogen and oxygen factories. <laughs> yes. Just yeah. slamming that shit together willy nilly. Yeah. So I have, I have a quick quiz for the two of you. Are you guys ready? Oh, I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do it. So Martin Riese is the co-director of the Fine Water Academy, where you too can train to be a water sommelier. I'm I doing need it. to Already die. Already signed up. Already I signed up. can't be in this world anymore. <laughs> <laughs> My question is, how much does it cost to take the one to three month course? Oh, we're we doing prices right now. Wow. Rules? Okay. <laughs> uh, no, absolute value. Absolute value. Okay. Uh, $1,200. $12,000. $2,200. Oh, yeah. Wow. Okay. So that's a, that sounds like that a deal. so much yeah, money. Second question. In a video on Martin's website, he shows a bottle of what kind of water that is bound to become more expensive as global warming progresses? 
Uh, ice. It's uh, glacier water. Ice, <laughs> iceberg water. Ooh, it's we iceberg were close. water. Yeah. yeah. Like it. And finally, Martin has created what kind of product that the rest of the show will be dedicated to trashing? Uh, water oh. uh, cup. Deuterium. Bottled water. <laughs> <laughs> Extra points if you can give me the name of his brand. Rain. Syn synthesis. Beverly Hills 90H2O. There it Fuck is. Fuck you! I'm so <laughs> jealous. That's a really good title. They, oh. make, they make a liter, a liter of bottled water that costs $100,000. What? It's the, yeah, it's the diamond edition of the luxury collection of Beverly Hills 90H2O. The water has calcium, potassium, and silica in it. The bottle cap is made of white gold with 14 karat <laughs> white and black diamonds. Important. Now, did this guy find a niche in the world or not? He nailed it, man. He nailed it. Oh, Patreon, uh, Patreon.com. Crazy billionaire slash, money. <laughs> we will buy the $100,000 bottle of water for Marsh and send it to him <laughs> <laughs> as a prank. Make I mean, it dissolve I mean, something in it. Think, of the, sort of think, think, of, the, think of the homeopathy that you could make. Yeah. <laughs> wow. There's so much money that you could make out of that water. That's amazing. Seriously, uh, we got to sign up for that for that water sommelier course with him and and oh no, Ross and carry them. That's a fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely. Time. Yeah. So so on the show, Martin says when you think over seventy percent of your body is actually water, it's like wait a second, that's not what we heard in the voiceover that was recorded presumably after you guys <laughs> did the thing with Martin in Los Angeles. <laughs> oh. Wow. Okay. Well, that guy is doing the water flights with them. He explains that water has TDS, that's a stat of fancy water, total dissolved solids. And then he starts pouring them different ones. He starts with what he calls the olive oil of water. That sounds so bad. <laughs> Which is, it sounds terrible, yes. I if I were oil. trying to dissuade someone from drinking a water, I'd be like, this is the olive oil of water. This one's oily. Enjoy. <laughs> yeah. This one's got 1,300 TDS units. Great mouthfeel. Like, like feel yeah. it in your mouth. Yep. It really coats <laughs> the inside of your mouth. Okay. But Zac Efron tries to say something like that, but he's a fucking idiot. And he's inconsolably high for this whole scene. <laughs> so oh, he is. He's got the he's squints. It's amazing. out of his face for this whole scene. He tries to say something here and he goes, water has a... Watery flavor, Stephen. So I've, ne I've never, I've never touched cannabis in my life, and so when I saw him in that scene, I was like, "Oh, I guess he was just like working late or something, and he's just tired." You thought no. Zac Efron was really no. hitting the books, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so then they do uh, some Spanish water, which Zach describes as it's like drinking pebbles. So it is more unpleasant than the olive oil water. They are finding. Worse ways. <laughs> it leaves like a granular <laughs> residue in your mouth. Hmm, that's good, I guess. Anna Kendrick says that. She's like, I I can feel the water sticking to the roof of my mouth. This is fucking stupid. She's so checking her watch. She's like, I, I get it, guys, I gave you like 30 minutes and we're like, it's 25 minutes now, so I'm going to have to leave very soon. And they, <laughs> they finish the tasting with a Slovenian water. Now look. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to insult our Slovenian brothers and sisters. But no one's ever been like, if you want the good stuff, you've got to go to Slovenia. <laughs> but apparently it's it's illegal in the U.S. So how did he smuggle it in? Yeah, he had to smuggle this water and it doesn't go through your cell walls. So you got to just keep it outside in, <laughs> in a bottle or whatever. That bottle was keistered is what we're yeah. hearing. <laughs> <laughs> this, this water is street illegal in America. Yeah. And Zac Efron looks at the water. They, he pours it out. He goes... What's in there, though? There's something. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's what Zac Efron thought of to say while he was looking at water. And I, I, I think Darren says, it tastes like there's a coin in there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Martin's like, that's how you know it's working. Yeah, yeah, this water tasting, just for the record, is olive oil, pebbles, and penny water. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, my God. This guy is every uh, boyfriend of my wife's friends I've ever been stuck with at a party because we're both male. <laughs> Yeah, he just he just discovered this new thing that no one knows about. He quit his job to found a startup, and you could be one of the lucky few on the ground floor of this investment. Just nice. trust me, ah. Shaka. Jonathan Jerry also knows my wife's friends. There we go. We found it, everyone. Yeah. 
And this is where the sommelier says, I'm not even going to tell you the TDS of this water. It's too high for you to comprehend. <laughs> you couldn't handle okay. it. Okay, it's 7,400. It's 7,400 <laughs> is the number. And then he says, this is not for hydration. This is medicine. Yeah. Because it has magnesium in it, which is a medicine? <laughs> is that a medicine? No, I mean, he keeps bringing up this concept of healing water, of like functional water that's practically medicine. And if you go on, on the side of his Water Sommelier Association, they mention curative water. So part of his shtick, if you'll pardon my German, is to indeed promote medicinal <laughs> medicinal water, which is not a thing. Oh, wow. So rough. And this is where they contradict themselves, where <laughs> Sommelier is like, oh, and by the way, over 70% of your body is water. And they're like, we just moments ago said a different... <laughs> No, oh, right. you know, like, you know, our, our range was pretty big. Like you could have hit anything in between that, but you had to go over. Damn. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, of course, he finishes with this little call and response thing with Anna Kendrick. He's like, so oh, tell yeah. me, um, do you think water is good? And she's like, yep, water is good. Do you think water has value? She's like, what? And then she's like, <laughs> do I think you're full of shit? Yes. Hard cut. Yeah. Hard cut. <laughs> yes. like, like Dune? Yeah, I guess water has value economically. <laughs> That's weird. But I'm pretty sure your job's made up bullshit. Yeah. I was talking to Darren and the sommelier that time. Just so everybody knows. And I'm out. We yeah. should send her flowers and a big bottle of water. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so good. So that was absolutely delightful watching Anna Kendrick shit all over their stupid show without them realizing it. And now they're ready to leave for Paris. But first, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back to learn all about the amazing hydrogen hydroxide technology of France. Thanks for uh, taking me out to dinner, Heath. Oh, yeah, no problem. Uh, so about that green card marriage. Uh, good evening. Nice. This is going to be so good. Uh, welcome to Malodorant. My name is Eitzel, and I will be your fat sommelier. This dude is the best. Like, seriously, the best. Ah, oh, Mr. Enright, it is good to see you again. Hi, Eitzel. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, did you say fart sommelier? Ah, uh, yes. Here at Marlo Doron, we try to enhance the guest experience by controlling even the farts they smell. I am an enthusiastic European, so Americans feel inferior and believe whatever I say. I see. Uh, for example, may I interest you in uh, the old lady? Ooh, it smells like, like sick, but in a natural way. Like it's for the best, you know? Yes, she is very close to death. Yes. Right. Actually, I, I think I'm... Uh, I mean, oh, perhaps just... you would be interested in movie popcorn, but no dinner. Oh, Jesus. Ooh, that's a good one. There's so much going on in there. Yes, it's a, a lot very, of different notes. Very complex fart, very nutty. Yeah. Please, please stop farting on us. You know what? You know what? I will leave you with the menu and I will come back. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Thanks, Heitzel. Sorry about that. No, it is fine. Listen, not everyone understands the way of... <sighs> oh, uh, was that like complimentary? No, no. I just shit my pants. Okay. So was it free? <laughs> and we're back. And now we're watching Zach Efron and Darren, whatever the fuck, driving their car into the train that takes the channel from England to France. And they are both terrified and also <laughs> amazed by this entire concept. They're freaking out. Watching them talk slash think through the existence of the channel is one of the darkest things we've ever viewed on this manga. <laughs> but it's a tunnel underwater. How do the trains breathe? <laughs> <laughs> yep. And Zach realizes there's a tie-in to the water thing. He's like, it's underwater, though. Like, water. We talked about that. Nailing it. Now, I, I have to be Team Zach briefly here and maybe for the entire duration of this episode because at least he has good intentions and he's just a lost sheep who's being taken advantage of, let's be real. But Zach seems to have claustrophobia. He's not feeling well. He's in a car inside a train that's in a tunnel under the sea, and he's just he's not taking it well. Now, if the guru that he picked up from that Whole Foods parking lot actually cared about <laughs> Zach's health and wasn't just tagging along for the free publicity, 
You would think that he would try to reassure him, get him to, to listen to calming music, maybe teach him to meditate, <laughs> progressive muscle. No, he mocks him, right? <laughs> he does. He reaches for his chest and he goes, I'm going to train in a tunnel under the sea. And he pretends to be short of breath and he starts laughing because that's what friends are for, right? Mocking anxiety disorders and people you're meant to be mentoring. Don't miss Darren's therapy tapes on vinyl called, Oh no, I hear voices. I'm going crazy. <laughs> I think Zach really needed a more appropriate guru for this show. Uh, someone with a solid background in psychology. You know, some, something like Down With Pronouns with Zach Efron and Jordan B. Peterson. <laughs> like, they're in the car in the channel and Zach is panicking and he asks Jordan, Is there anything I can do to get rid of the anxiety? And Jordan goes, Oh, let me tell you what doesn't help with the anxiety. These <laughs> bloody postmodern neo-Marxists and their pronouns. <laughs> Z, Zer, Zach, without the K at the end, just made up names straight from the matriarchal world of darkness. <laughs> and God, well, God is the ultimate archetype. Now, stay away from cider and benzos. They don't mix. <laughs> oh, oh. You want, you want to sign my letter? No. <laughs> no. Get away. No. Go eat some meat. <laughs> <laughs> right. So they finally make it through the tunnel, though, and they they're in France, and this is they're driving from the coast over to Paris, and this is when Darren decides, okay, we need to stop the car, get out in this random field next to a highway, and ch check the pulse of the earth with our bare feet. He goes, he goes, I want to feel the earth, and Zac Efron absolutely thinks he means fuck, right? There's an infinite... <laughs> He's like, fuck? Zac Efron's exact response is, you mean do push-ups? <laughs> yeah, he, like, doesn't, he yeah. doesn't seem to understand a category of people other than actor and personal trainer, but <laughs> he'll get there. I have faith. Yeah, but Darren's theory here is there's like a, a way of soaking up the new energy of the new country you're in, like like the earth is aware of political boundaries yeah. between countries and the energy pulse is different. So you have to like recalibrate yourself and the shoes fuck it up. So you have to do it with bare feet. Yeah, he just comes across as a pushy foot fetishist. He's just like, take your shoes and socks off and walk through the grass for me, Zac Efron. I need this. <laughs> and Zac Efron finally agrees to do it. And immediately he's like, and I stepped in dog shit right away. <laughs> I didn't know that uh, Netflix was dipping a toe in the adult content pool. <laughs> Got to make a living. <laughs> yep, absolutely. <laughs> also, just tiny little moment, but I loved it. For no reason, Darren is like, parkour! And does like, a stupid <laughs> oh, yeah. little move over the little railing next to Oh, <laughs> he's doing so much old guy stretching. He's doing that arm bar in front of his chest thing and the fucking over-the-shoulder stretch. It's phenomenal. Yeah. He does the little grinder thing where he puts one hand down and like walks around in a circle, like a compass <laughs> around. <his side. laughs> so good. Uh, Pulls out a whistle that he doesn't need to have. It's phenomenal. Yeah. And, <laughs> and this is when Darren says something about circadian rhythms. And Zach Efron clearly thought that was like a nonsense word that Darren had just made up <laughs> on the spot. So he clarifies on the VO. He's like, yeah, so that sounded like ridiculous nonsense, but no, it's a real thing. Circadian rhythms are real. And apparently you got to get the electromagnetic connection to the earth. You fix your jet lag by soaking up the electromagnetic field in your new time zone through your bare feet. Is, um... Is that accurate scientifically, Jonathan? So, so first off, they were in London and now they're in Calais. There's, that's a whole like hour difference. So I don't know. I guess it's going to take weeks for them to get over that jet lag unless they, <laughs> unless they have a foot party, I guess. But yeah, as you, as you pointed out, I love the format of their interaction because Darren says touching the earth with your bare feet will reset your circadian rhythm. And Zach in voiceover goes, turns out, and you go, what? Is there good scientific evidence behind grounding? No, he says, turns out, the circadian rhythm is a real thing. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Netflix, for this educational bit of programming. Can I do a show where I tell Shia LaBeouf that sticking a candle up your nose can ward off the coronavirus? And he, he then tells the camera, turns out the nose is a real thing. <laughs> but again, keep in mind how little content they possibly got that they kept 
we went through a tunnel, isn't that cool? And we got out of the car and stretched for a bit. It, that made it into the show. Yep. Yeah, the the editor's like, guys, you gave me like 35 minutes of footage. Like, I, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel here. Guys, you, you got into a weird fight with that doctor at the beginning. That was supposed yes. to be the whole episode. We're just making shit up now. I don't know. You guys want to have a race in the field? So they have a race. <laughs> they have a foot race in the field. And uh, Zac Efron loses and gets kind of mad about it. And he <laughs> insists on doing a VO being like, yeah, Darren, Darren won that foot race. But uh, <laughs> uh, it didn't get, sun was in my eyes. I, I was tired. I needed a power bar. Oh, yeah. And as though they were challenged by our commentary, now we're going to watch them just fucking chat about whether or not Zac Efron can cry on demand. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. They're back in the car. They're driving to Paris. And Darren is like, uh, apropos of nothing, you did not prompt me to ask you about this so that you could show off your acting chops. Can you cry on demand? <laughs> and Zac Efron's like, have you not seen my movies? That's why I get hired as an actor is because my amazing crying. <laughs> I I love that they show one of them faking something on demand and that person is sitting right next to Zac Efron. <laughs> <laughs> but more importantly, he can't. Right. He's like, oh, yeah, let me show you. And then he, he just... He, he gets like misty-eyed yeah. a little bit. He makes yeah. a sad face and he's like, there it is, crying on demand. <laughs> yeah. He, did, <laughs> he just does the wince for a second and he's like, ta-da, and scene. <laughs> let me know Nailed if that it. acting's too powerful for you. I, I don't know if you saw, but I made the frowny face that time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that water sommelier in West Hollywood needs to bottle that up and sell it as like, tears of Zach. Oh. <laughs> TDS of 600. <laughs> I drank that. <laughs> They also talk a little bit about what's in the tap water that's bad because they're going to be reviewing tap water in Paris. If it even is water, Heath, because Darren says, we seem to have water that comes out of the tap. What do you mean it seems <laughs> like it's water? What do you think it is? Yeah, that's not part of the, the conspiracy if there's a conspiracy. <laughs> it, it like the, the tap being the source is not part of the trick. That's weird. No, yeah. Darren also says that some water gets energized by the sun, like the good water is in rivers and the sun touches it. Like like Probably, tap water doesn't yeah. have units of heat in it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't understand that. I mean, look, it's probably the conclusion you come to when you watch Superman Returns on Ecstasy. Oh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> but you, um, he does say, that, you know, he, he concludes by saying we're drinking this experimental tea that has all of those unnatural things in it. Now... Uh, not true, but I would pay money to see Darren Olian give that presentation to the citizens of Flint, Michigan a few years ago. <sighs> Trust me, dude, bros, you do not want tap water. What you want is to buy like a top of the line reverse osmosis machine for your home. Now you'll be missing out on healing electrolytes. So what you want to do is you add Himalayan crystal salt to your water by hand. Why Himalayan salt, you ask? Because it's mined from ancient seabeds. So it's pure from modern <laughs> environmental toxins. Again, a big thank you to the city of Flint for paying for my travels and my speaking fee. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So they finally get to their hotel and they start really taking advantage of Paris by studying the water. Ah, yes. The fine, fine tap water of Paris, as it is always known. <laughs> yep. And they meet with Deputy Mayor of Paris, Celia Blau, and she's fantastic, actually. She's delightful. At first, she's like kind of humoring them, being nice about it. But then it turns because she realizes what's happening and Yay! she hates them. This, it's pretty great. This poor lady. I feel almost as bad for her as I do for Anna Kendrick because she's a public servant. She's so excited to be on television with yeah. the high school musical American <laughs> Boy. And she thinks she's going to get to do a little science talk about how she, her public works project. And the, she gets about four sentences in before she's like, oh, everyone's crazy but me. <laughs> 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 but she 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 does say because they 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 mutually kind of hate the 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 idea of of bottled water and she goes you know I think a bottle of uh, water is the biggest joke ever and I kind of agree but you know who needs to hear this the water sommelier who sells one hundred thousand dollar <laughs> bottles of water you had him on your show oh we need to get all the people they interviewed together to fight with each other <laughs> yes 
Yeah. <laughs> it's rough. Uh, also, did she say that their free water fountain system, they have like this great system where they have free water fountains. Like, so, you know, homeless people can have water. It's a really good thing. Yeah, which is amazing. Yeah. It's great. Did she say that it makes a bunch of money somehow? And then they like give the money back to the system. I was confused by that. Does the yeah the the money goes back to the the French citizens? I, I I didn't really understand that because of course the two dudes don't want to hear about the economics of of public works. I mean they just want to drink some of that water. And so she's like, oh I, I didn't bring a bottle with me. And so Darren's like, oh it's okay. And just like bends down. And he just starts <laughs> drinking straight from the fountain. He's like, oh that's good stuff. <laughs> she hates it. She's like, oh that is unsanitary. Don't don't, don't touch it. I, okay. When I said bottled water is bad, I did not mean put your lips on a public Please recept. Don't. Oh, man. <laughs> too okay. late. That's too late. Gross. Super gross. That's and hey, cost us a bunch. this is where they announced that they did the most French thing ever. <laughs> yeah. Which is that <laughs> <laughs> it's not just a public works project. They have sparkling public water. <laughs> yes. I was so excited uh, about this. This is real. They might as well have cheese fountains sitting around the middle of Paris. <laughs> she goes, uh, yeah, we have uh, sparkling fountains because uh, flat water is uh, so boring. I mean, it's flat, it's boring, uh, nothing happens. So we made uh, sparkling fountains and uh, we have uh, champagne fountains as well for uh, the homeless <laughs> and uh, croissant uh, dropping from the sky using drones. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's the bare minimum for France. Uh, what do you guys have in America? <laughs> Uh, for a year and a half, the Guns. head of the EPA was a guy who'd spend his life trying to eliminate it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Pretty much. Yep. But Zac Efron must find one of these sparkling <laughs> water fountains. He freaks the fuck out. And in fairness, I did too. I must find one of these. Now, and then he goes, the sparkling water doesn't come from a spring. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's so it's, excited. I know. <laughs> it's simply CO2 that's added to the water. And do you know what CO2 is? Together, everybody, a chemical. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> a chemical that's added to another chemical, oxidane, commonly known as water, because everything is a chemical. So please, when you're talking about toxic substances that have adverse health effects, could you stop calling them chemicals? No? All right, at least I tried. <laughs> <laughs> You did, man. So, so speaking of science, they're not going to understand. Right. <laughs> exactly. From there, they head over to the Paris water treatment plant. So they're going to check out the process for the public water there. Yeah. And as, as they're driving up, this is one of my favorite Zac Efron literal quotes. They're driving up to, oh, yeah. to this water treatment plant. He goes, I can smell the, the water. And, and even Darren's going like, tone down the bullshit, dude. Come, come like, on, man. I know you're trying, but like, don't. It's a little too far. I do this for a living, but you're a little much right now. <laughs> peel it back. Peel it back, Zach. You're a little green at this, Zach. Come oh, on. and I, again, you feel so bad for this poor public servant. He's got his little vest and he puts the he puts the hats on them and they're like, what are these for? And he's like, don't. Ask stupid questions. You don't care. Just wear, <laughs> wear a hat because I told you to. And they, there's this amazing initial moment. We see the like reservoirs before they've drained and filtered and done all the stuff to them. And Zac Efron, obviously going for a comedy moment, is like, so what's the weirdest thing you've ever filtered out of the water? And the servant has this amazing look on his face where he's like, I mean, come on, man. You know, it's a dead body. It's Of course, it's a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> People jump. Uh, we are French. <laughs> I have to say, I was I was very disappointed because for a show that is all about experiencing things and checking things out for yourself, I wanted them to throw Zach and Darren into the filtration. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they yeah. can experience the whole process for themselves. But given that the whole thing is shot handheld and there are lots of snap zooms, I mean, this struck me as the weirdest episode of MTV Cribs I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's the living room uh, where we treat uh, 300,000 uh, cubic meters a day, just me and my bitches. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, he mentions 300,000 cubic meters of water a day that they go through, that they process at this What place. is that like, Heath? Can you give me an analogy? So, this is, yeah. <laughs> this is when Zach Efron is like, hey, guys. Uh, popping in just to explain what you just heard. Cubic meter, that's complicated technical jargon. It's a unit of volume. You're probably going to need a visual aid. So one cubic meter, it's like a washer and dryer sitting next to each other. Um, 
What if they're not sitting next to each other? I wonder what <laughs> Zach thinks that means. It messes and the And then whole he's like, and now imagine 300,000 washers and dryers. So now that that's explained, we get to look at their whole system. And there's also this fantastic moment, again, at the reservoirs where they're walking and they see that there are ducks in the above ground yes. reservoirs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there are ducks in there. And then the guy says, you know, like, ah, we keep the ducks in. Uh, they produce uh, natural substances. Uh, we call it uh, old cloak. Uh, we bottle it. And <laughs> we sell it to this uh, water sommelier in uh, West Hollywood. And uh, he make a fortune with uh, old cloak. <laughs> And this is where Darren, like, because there's ducks, he's like, could I swim in it? And he's like, no, man, this is like a big fucking state works thing. I made you. Oh, yeah. No, you can jump into our giant water pit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is where Darren also explains that in the U.S., we have 600 times too much chlorine. And that's why we have all the cancer. Apparently, <laughs> the Paris system doesn't use chlorine. They, they use UV light and... They use uh, ozone. Which is natural. <laughs> well, what's great is the Paris water guy, he doesn't say we don't use chlorine. He's just like, yep, we use much, much less than that amount of chlorine you just said. <laughs> also, I just don't have time to correct all the stuff. It, that whole sentence <laughs> had, had so much wrong with it. It was crazy. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then Zach, our friend's like, can I go swimming? And he's like, no, stop trying to make jokes. No, absolutely not. <laughs> I hate you guys. <laughs> right. Sure does. Well, Zach Efron and Darren are definitely no longer welcome at any government buildings in France. So that's nice. Uh, they're going to walk around the city now and find some of that famous Parisian tap water as the plot of their show. But first, we're going to take one more quick break to drink some chlorine. And then we'll be back with the thrilling, watery conclusion of Down to Earth, Episode 2. Hi, I'm B-List Celebrity, and this is... Public servants slowly realize I'm nuts now. Today, I'm here with the head of sewage treatment, Francois Merdoulet. Frank, thanks so much for joining us. Yes, uh, I am uh, Francois Merdouille. Uh, wow, a Billy celebrity. Uh, I somewhat enjoyed your work in uh, 1997, and uh, I'm very excited uh, to be on uh, television. <laughs> you did, and you are. So tell us a little about the work you do here. Well, uh, here at the uh, water treatment facility of uh, Ponton les Chias, uh, we process over 3 million gallons of sewage a year. Uh, this is a process Fascinating. That, uh, I am so interested. And so, do you ever see the sewage, you know, cause problems? Um, well, I mean, we, we have quite a few uh, safety measures in place. Good. Safety measures are good. Yeah, I mean, this, this plant was built in uh, 1992 and has been uh, operating mm -hmm. uh, for... And how well armed are your guards? Sorry, how well armed are guards? Uh, yeah, you know, in case the poop monsters congeal and come back for revenge. Poop monsters? Yeah, you know, when you eat animal products, tiny bits of their souls go down the toilet and then those soul fragments congeal in raw sewage to create poop monsters which come back to seek their bloody, bloody vengeance. We uh, we haven't dealt with any uh, poop monsters. Wow, you guys must be doing an amazing job then. Uh, thank you. Next up, I'm going to eat a piece of poop and shit it out again to apologize. Sorry, uh, any chance I can get that uh, release form back as, as a contract? No. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back. And now it's time for Zach and Darren to have way too much difficulty <laughs> learning to use the app that they have in Paris to find all the free water fountains. <laughs> they have so much trouble with it. It's the best. Oh, and the editors are fucking with them. The editors <laughs> to sub in like a fucking Madden arrow to be like, the fountain's here. <laughs> and then we just watch them look for the fountain for another 16 minutes. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Uh, do, do you realize how they found the water fountain? Eventually, the cameraman was literally standing next to it, yep. shooting and waiting for them to find <laughs> it. <laughs> but of course, an, an app is not going to cut it for Darren. No, no. Darren is trying his dowsing technique. He <laughs> gets down low to the ground and he's like, no, I got this. I'll be able to find it. I'll be able to find it. I'm going to feel the pulse of the concrete with my hand. <laughs> And rub my hand along this dog shit on, in this city. <laughs> I watch all the episodes of Captain Planet. 
And he finds nothing. And it's, they spend the next 15 minutes walking around while the camera guy's just like, I'm not going to say a fucking word, but it's obviously right next to me where I'm pointing my camera. <laughs> yeah. Like all, all the camera operators are on like this WhatsApp group and they're like talking shit about the host. Like, can you believe that he went down on the floor thinking that he could feel the water? I know. <laughs> they've, they've got a pool going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I, I can just Im- imagine the infomercial because he's got to commercialize this. Hi, I'm Darren Olean. Is a $20 price tag on a Dow rod holding you back from pursuing your passion for water witching (laughs) don't worry there is another way and i have the patent on it for only five easy payments of 99.99 which will go to pay for my home reverse osmosis system (laughs) you too can learn the hand to ground method for finding water simply crouch on the ground like your spider-man put your hand on the gravel and simply bullshit your way to a water source If you're in Paris, you're bound to stumble on a water fountain at some point. And if you are interested in purchasing my method and you also regularly consult psychics and mediums, you are eligible for the frequent flyer discount. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. So we watch Darren jumping around doing parkour like Spider-Man, landing like Iron Man, smashing his hand to the ground. Can't find it. They finally find it with the help of the cameraman. And then... They, they cut away and we get a voiceover from Zac Efron accidentally explaining how much better his last trip to Paris yes. was when there wasn't a, a fucking tap water theme. He was just like, man, I just had like a bunch of really good like steak frites and it was like delicious. Ooh, the is, museums were nice. Fucking but, stupid. But now Darren yells at me and pretends to have superpowers. So that's weird. <laughs> Fuck, we forgot about the shrine. We should go shoot the rest of that yes. shrine. Yep. <laughs> So they leave Paris and they head to Lourdes. He, he might as well outro that voiceover with, oh, fuck, how much time is left in the episode? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh... Yeah, so they're at Lourdes now. This is, uh, this is where that healing shrine is, the number one ranked healing shrine in the world. Four to six million people show up every year to check out their holy water and try to cure their cancer or whatever. And also go to the, the sweet gift shop that they show you oh, in, why? in the frame. Why? If you're trying to make this look legit, I say this later in my notes, but they never manage to get a shot of this holy fountain that doesn't have, one, a gift shop in it, and two, a <laughs> exactly. giant gold-covered excrescence. There is no single <laughs> shot so of Lord's where, that isn't filled with, like, medieval children's tears. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Yep, and uh, we get the backstory on this shrine. Apparently, some girl way back in the day started digging in the mud and found water, believe it or not. That's the whole thing. That's the miracle of the shrine. There was there was water where there was mud. Yeah, the, the bar for miracles within the Catholic Church is stunningly low. Because, yeah, the, the, the story that Zach tells is of a 14-year-old girl who claims an apparition showed her the way to a natural spring. And the church is like, how could this teenager have found water all by herself? It must be a divine intervention. <laughs> Now, the, if you if you check out the Skeptics Dictionary on Lourdes, it says that the girl's body is on display and is alleged to be incorruptible. But the lifelike hands what? and face, yeah, her hands and her face are apparently actually made out of wax. Ah, that would explain okay. a lot. Yeah. Who was trying to corrupt her? How, like, that's a the weird... The devil. Thing. Oh, okay. Also, an even weirder thing is like, who made the jump from like, huh, you know what, Cynthia, you were right. There is a spring there. Hey, we should charge old ladies with cancer to come here, right? Yeah. Like really old ladies who can't afford it. They should come here and touch some rocks and die anyway. And go to the gift shop. Show the <laughs> gift shop again. <laughs> yeah. So that's what they did. And uh, now we're finally talking with Dr. Alessandro again after their big fight. Yeah. And we learn what he does. Well, first of all, Darren tries to cool things down with Alessandro because <laughs> he just he just threw his fit. Right. And even though even though the doctor is Italian, I mean, he does the most French thing ever. Darren says, you know, he's trying to convince me, he's like, he's dedicated his life to finding health principles around the world. And it means everything to him. And the doctor just goes and rolls his eyes and he raises his hand like, so what? Uh, you think you invented bullshit? Uh, I study miracles that come from people touching rocks, huh? It is such a beautiful little moment. Like if you blink, you're going to miss it. But the doctor's like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. So they finally get this guy back on the couch so they can do the interview. 
He's still super angry at them, but they're trying to smooth it over. <laughs> yeah. His job is to meet with the people who show up at this shrine claiming a miracle cure happened to them. Like their cancer went away from some kind of miracle, like holy water. Mm -hmm. And he sees about a hundred people a year. <laughs> it's not the hardest job. And then they explain how the Catholic church has a rigorous set of criteria for a cure to be considered a real miracle. Can we go through these conditions really quick? Yes, please. And educate us. Okay. So condition number one, a doctor has to diagnose a real illness, which is great because that just means a whole bunch of people showed up and were like, yeah, I had fucking, I don't know, felt cancery and now I don't. So <laughs> great. So they made that rule number one. I guess that's a good one. Condition number two, uh, bullshit little stuff doesn't count. You can't just be like, my headache went away. My Morgellons seems less <laughs> flared up now. So I guess that's another good one. Condition number three, the illness has to go away instantly, like right on the spot. Condition number four, the cure happens in instantly. We already said that. Okay. Shit, fuck, running out of conditions. I already <laughs> wrote it down. I wrote it down. Condition number five, the person is completely cured instantly. I said it again. I'm going to put my pen down. I'm putting my pen down. <laughs> we're just going to, we'll put it, we'll edit it later. They don't though. Condition number six, the disease can't come back for at least 10 years. And condition number seven, there can't be any real explanations for it. <laughs> and that's that guy's job. Oh, So, so he starts showing them x-rays of like a, a cloudy hip bone next to a <laughs> not cloudy hip bone. And that's evidence of a, a declouding miracle of his hip cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but see, I, I want to see an alternate version of the show, like Down with Race Science with Zac Efron and Sam Harris. Uh, so <laughs> the doctor, the doctor, he's talking about miraculous healings. He's showing them x-rays of hips. And Sam is like, but I was curious to know if you had x-rays of skulls. Now, once again, I'll be taken completely out of context. <laughs> you, tell me, you tell me you see 100 people a year. That's a lot of skulls. It's an interesting data set that <laughs> I would like to share with my friend, uh, Charles Murray. <laughs> okay, but Jonathan, what do you think? How is their criteria, skeptically speaking, for miraculous healings? Well, I mean, the, the criteria are pretty decent, but the thing, that, what it boils down to is documentation, right? Do you have the right documentation? Has the right investigation been done? And again, turning to the Skeptics Dictionary about... 200 million people have made the pilgrimage to Lourdes over the years. So the success rate is like one out of every three million, roughly. <laughs> <laughs> but it's worse than that because you may want to take into account the fatal accidents suffered by pilgrims on their way to or from Lourdes. And so Serious? it's oh, conceivable God. that more people have died going to Lourdes than have been allegedly miraculously <laughs> healed. <laughs> And of course, I, I mean, I also love the logic of that mythology. And I know that I don't need to say this to your listeners, but the logic is that there's an omnipotent and omniscient God, right? Who allows disease and fractures and infections. But if you go to this one place on earth, he will grant a complete healing to maybe 70 people out of 200 million. <laughs> you know, you, you got to want it pretty bad. Please stop by the gift shop and give generously. Please stay at one of the 270 hotels in Lourdes. It's good for the economy. Please, please, please. <laughs> and speaking of the documentation, we get the argument from Lee Strobel here. The doctor shows his like big stack of paperwork and he's like, if you measure my paperwork in height... <laughs> The medicine part is much taller than the religion yeah. part. So I'm science. And what's amazing, they, he has to correct them. They're like, wow, these are all the people who were miraculously healed. And he's like, no, this is um, just the people who said they were healed. So, yeah, you can fill up a lot of binders with crazy old ladies. <laughs> There's an interview with Alessandro in the Catholic World Report in which he says that when he was young, he was working in the baths with sick children. I don't know what that means. What? Yeah, I don't know. But he was confronted with the, the problem of evil. So he decided to study pediatrics to help suffering children, which is great. But now I feel like he did a 180 and he went right back to just contemplating the suffering from a distance and just praying for a miracle. <laughs> yep. What a journey. 
And what I love is that he ends this whole thing, right? He's like, yeah, so you could see here is a bad x-ray. And then later they took a good x-ray. It's a miracle. <laughs> but he ends this whole like, I'm so medical and scientific thing by being like, oh, and then I send it to the bishop and the bishop's like, yep, that was God. <laughs> Why would I say no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's their system. So they finish up their little uh, their their little interview with Dr. Alessandro. And as they're walking out, Zach Efron's like, yeah, by the end of the day, he, uh, I don't think he hated us as much. I think, uh, I think that guy likes us. No, he does not. Did he, did he say anything? Did you guys do that one-on-one? -on -one? You didn't? Okay. You want to cool. do, do a fist bump? No, no fist bump? Stronzy, <laughs> stronzy. The guy shouts from behind no his fist door. Bump. That's okay. So from there, they go to meet up with the chaplain of the healing sanctuary, mm -hmm. Father Jim Phelan. This guy, <laughs> hey. Credit where credit's due, this guy is absolutely fucked, right? Because he has three minutes of screen time left to turn every every incredibly dangerous homicidal claim that was just made by this show into a metaphor. It, it, it better be a metaphor because he's like, yeah, 8,000 people with cancer or something like that. They show up every year. Oh, we don't cure them, but... Oh, they like it here. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 feel, they feel good. He says, you know, Lord is not about magic. It's about gaining indulgences to fast track your soul to heaven, <laughs> which is a thing that happened under Pope Benedict, at least, and may still be happening for all I know. You go there and the church tells you that you've just been forgiven for like five sins or something. <laughs> oh, nice. But they don't tell you which five. <laughs> no. Otherwise, you could plan ahead. You could. I'm, I'm picturing an Epstein scenario it's, and it's, I don't want to get into it. It's chef's choice. <laughs> and the general message here, they don't use the term placebo effect, but the message is, yeah, it's nice here. The placebo effect is real. You know, you think you're doing something. All you got to do is fly to Paris, drive to Lourdes, and then buy a candle and some fancy stuff at our gift shop. And, uh, you know, nothing. But And I'll tell you, what I was blown away by is that there's not an official process. Like, I've gone and kissed the Blarney Stone and they're like, yep, lean your head back. That's the rock. Kiss that one. <laughs> but apparently at Lord's, they're just like, yeah, you know, wander around and then uh, fuck off, I guess. You fuck off? Yeah, I guess you can fuck off. <laughs> so that's when Zach and Darren decide to just walk around the, the magic cancer castle in slow-mo for a little montage. It's very emotional. And again, they cannot get a single shot without solid gold statues and donation <laughs> nope. boxes and a priest fucking a kid in the back. Right? It's the, this was the hardest shoot of this entire TV show, I guarantee you. I think my favorite moment was the closed captioning that said, serious French yes. indie rock music. Serious <laughs> music. <laughs> okay, so I think the music editor is like that skeptic who was working at Goop on the Goop Lab. Remember that guy? <laughs> and he's trying to send us messages because this whole sequence at the end is indeed underscored with a song in French. And part of the lyrics literally translates to all of these lies which we disguise will one day leave us defenseless. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm yep. dead serious. And this is <laughs> literally a warning against a lack of critical thinking skills. Oh, man. Anna Kendrick was definitely involved in producing <laughs> like, that song can I, somehow. Can I come and do some posts for you guys? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Nobody speaks French, right? No, why? Exactly. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Shaka. <laughs> and uh, then we get to watch all the people with cancer have a, a fucking false hope parade with candles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and Zach gets to sort of do his apologetic thing. He's like, yeah, whether or not you believe in prayer, candles are pretty. I'm sorry, did I say candles are pretty? <laughs> yep. You guys aren't going to put this in the show, are you? He actually asks himself, does any of this work? Mm, I got no idea. But candles, right? That's nice. <laughs> and then he says, he says, but if a miracle is defined as the impossible, inexplicably becoming possible, then real or not doesn't matter, does it? Um, uh, uh, mm, what <laughs> philosophy yeah. 101 logic 101. but actually whether or not you were truly healed or you just think you're feeling better in the moment because you're filled with the spiritual drunkenness that's a big freaking difference sure yeah. is also if they charge money for the placebo effect that's a difference <laughs> yes 
That's free. But apparently they don't charge to go to go there. But but one, but of course you have to stay at a hotel and you, you have, have to if get you want there. To buy from the gift shop. You and, need the little bottle. Yeah, they're they're finding ways to monetize. Fun observation: wow. after the end credits have rolled, there's finally a slide that states this program contains product placement. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you have it. <laughs> All right. Well, now they're finally going to close it out with a question for themselves that they have trouble answering. How is tap water related to miraculous cancer healing? We seem to kind of do both of those in this episode. And the answer is, I don't know the answer to any of my questions for me in this scripted show. I'm Zach Efron. <laughs> Bye. I don't know why they asked me to do the voiceover. <laughs> Someone help me. <laughs> the end. I know how to skateboard. Last thing. Sorry. <laughs> I also can skateboard. What do you think that this last monologue is telling us here, Jonathan? I think the bottom line is that tap water is evil because of chlorine, lack of minerals, and tons of chemicals. So you have to smuggle in Estonian water that tastes like <laughs> copper. <laughs> or or move to Paris and be homeless. Or go to Lourdes if you want medicinal <laughs> water. Or actually, there's a restaurant in West Hollywood that sells curative water. So it's, it's up to you, whatever is closest. <sighs> I mean, the whole show on Netflix is frustrating because it is superficially about the environment, about sustainable practices, but there's a lot of pseudoscience woven through and through, more so in this episode, less so in others. You know, they platform a vegan food blogger who was a major figure in the clean eating movement. There's a guy who claims goat milk comes out of the animal pre-pasteurized. <laughs> and nope. Yeah, and there's another guy who claims that genetically engineered plants are killing bees. And it acts as a soft endorsement of, of Darren Olean, whose book basically tells you that if you don't eat organic food, you're giving yourself cancer. And the critical response to the show has been, did you see the pecs on Zac Efron? Uh, heard me, daddy, heard me. <laughs> and look, I, I know that Zach means well, and he's on this like tenuous spiritual journey to find meaning in his life since starring in Dirty Grandpa just didn't cut it. But he's a prime victim for health gurus to exploit like so many celebrities. And many viewers, you know, they watch these celebrity endorsements, they develop orthorexia, they start wasting money on products thinking they're cleaning their bodies, but they're just cleaning their wallets. And I think compassion and empathy are important and I'm not advocating for schadenfreude. Oh, I am, just to be clear. <laughs> Jonathan's not, I am. But but Heath, if you want to get a bit of schadenfreude, uh, if, <laughs> you wanna, if, you, if you feel <laughs> angry toward these alternative health gurus and you're looking for some sort of celestial justice, all I will say is watch the last episode of Down to Earth with Zac Efron. <laughs> oh. Uh, no spoilers, but it's fantastic. <laughs> That's all I'll say. <laughs> it may be worth the series. Fantastic. All right. Last thing before we wrap it up. Who would you rather punch in the face, Zach Efron or Darren? Uh, that $100,000 bottle of Beverly Hills 90H2O over the diamonds would probably hurt my hand. <laughs> uh, reversal of the question. I want Anna Kendrick to punch me in the face. It's a sex thing. Oh, yep. Eli's answer is correct. I win two points. You do. <laughs> <laughs> and while that does it, for our review of Down to Earth Episode 2. It's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we found at least one more bad movie for next week. So tell us, Eli, what's on deck? Out of the Shadows. Great. What's that about? Do you have any idea? This is the very popular YouTube documentary <laughs> about the deep state that Alex Jones created. Oh, God, there's going to be fed Ponzi scheme stuff. So, so many people. Angry requested it that uh, and that's the like end of my time right now that's great. <laughs> just walking out of this one what you just heard was jonathan's parachute he's gone <laughs> I, i'm the anna kendrick of this episode <laughs> <laughs> all right well with that to look forward to we're gonna bring episode 258 to a merciful close big thanks to jonathan jerry for joining us again and if people want to hear more from you where should they go all of my work is archived at jonathanjerry.com, J-A-R-R-Y. I'm also on Twitter, and I'm the co-host of the Body of Evidence podcast. Check it out. Excellent. Award-winning. Yes, once. Yeah? What, what <laughs> award? Oh, it, it was, it was, a, it was a, a people's, the People's Choice Award for Science Communication in Canada, something like that. See, this Excellent. is why you got to make COVID. Then you get to be skeptic of the year three years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Should have brought you in on the ground floor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. And once again, huge thanks to all the Patreon donors. 
If you'd like to make sure Eli and Anna's child doesn't live in poverty and squalor, mm, please do you can it. help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, help us out. Well, at least with the poverty part by making a per episode <laughs> donation at <laughs> patreon.com slash godawful. He's all sticky with mango nectar. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> he definitely is. And uh, that'll get you early access to an ad-free version of every episode and also 49 and counting bonus episodes about movies like Samurai Fucking Cop and Roadhouse, among others. Hell yeah! And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, The Skeptocrat, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available on Apple Music, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Jonathan Jerry and Eli Bosnick, I'm Heath Enright, promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Animal House clothes. Anna Kendrick can remove one of my front teeth with her bare hands. <laughs> Zach Efron went on to star in 20th High School Reunion Musical. <laughs> it was real sad. <sighs> Netflix went on to green light Down With Pronouns with Zach Efron and Jordan B. Peterson. The first episode <laughs> took place in Serbia. Jordan, why are we eating steak again? When I was in Sardinia, it was all about low protein. Well, that is what those bloody neo-Marxists would say. <laughs> and stay away from <laughs> cider. Yeah, no, I, I, I know. You, you, you told me. Oh, I didn't sleep for a year. Just laying awake, frozen in terror, contemplating my doom. <laughs> oh, oh. We have to do a Jordan Peterson movie just so that Jonathan can do that impression the entire yes. time. Has he made any fucking movies? Sure. Well, there there is a movie about him. <gasps> what? That, yes, I haven't seen it. It's a it's a documentary that followed him for a little while, and oh. it, it was supposed to be shown in a theater here in Montreal, and there was backlash, and they pulled it, and there was a free speech, free speech. Uh, but I haven't seen it. It's it's on iTunes. I think you can rent it there. Oh, we that's locked in. That is locked in. <laughs> Not the last you've heard of Jonathan. Everyone, <laughs> <laughs> buckle in. Let, let me see. Oh, it's called it's called the Rise of Jordan Peterson. Oh, awesome. great! Ninety one minutes. <laughs> How'd we do this time, Heath? Like, did I press record correctly? I did. <laughs> no, because remember the last time your Zoom was slow to respond. Yep. Your Zoom was slow. Terse. We're good. Terse. <laughs> Morgan, Tone. please send me send me that. <laughs> it's for my my file of times that Heath was sharp with me. I use it when we're in arguments. I have a series your, of your, your your HR folder. <laughs> <laughs> also, those aren't okay. seconds. I'm okay. looking at them. Well, you weren't saying it when you're looking at the times <laughs> then, because those aren't seconds. They are seconds. It's like Hail to the Chief is in seconds. like bah, 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 bah. And that's really the piece of music that we should all have in our mind <laughs> yeah. these days. I have, I have so many follow-up questions about Hail to the Chief being in seconds, but we, have, we don't have time. We have to get to Zach Efron. All right, the meter we... on Hail to the Chief is nor like most people hear it in the time of... Well, that's in double, like half of what you were tapping out there is seconds. Bah, bah, no, 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 don't slow it down. Just tap half as often. Okay. God damn it. <laughs> what a great metaphor to explain seconds. It is. It's useful. This got me out of getting arrested. I once, <laughs> this is, this is real. What? This is, yes, this is real. I was driving home from spring break. We went to fucking Daytona, Florida. It was garbage. Oh, God. But we had, this is in college and I was a, pharmaceutical distributor for a large multinational corporation. Um, so I had a bunch <laughs> so of So you were a drug dealer. I was a drug dealer, correct. And I had a, a lunch bunch of pot in the car, bunch <laughs> of pot. And even on the way back from this vacation, I still had a bunch of pot. Think about that. So I'm on the way back and I am literally dr driving from Daytona, Florida to New York City or Ooh. just outside New York City. Wow. And I'm <clears throat> less than a mile from my house. Hey. I'm that close to making it. And like 10 minutes before that, me and my friend are like, all right, we're almost there. Let's, we're going to roll up a joint. We're going to smoke a joint. Like we made it. We, we made it. So we Woo! smoked a joint. 
I get pulled over immediately after we're done. As soon as we finish the joint, I get pulled over like feet from my house, get pulled out of the car because obviously it smells like pot. I'm pretending like, no, I was, I was on spring break. You know, my shirt smells. It's, that's what it is. Cop calls for backup. They pull me out. They gave me that, you know, roadside sobriety test. They didn't have the like blow into the balloon thing at the time, but they gave me the like, you know, uh, stand on one foot and tilt your head back for and tell us when 30 seconds is up. And I was like, OK. And I remembered my buddy who's a musician told me, can, can you well, you can estimate it well, one second by doing hail to the chief in your head as that like <laughs> tapping at the time. And I nailed it and they didn't arrest me. They didn't do anything. I walked away. Oh. I should have been in jail. How music saved your life. There you go. And being white. The Heath, the Heath and Wright story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Seriously, we got to go to that restaurant in LA and get flights <laughs> and water. And fuck with that guy. For and fuck with that guy the whole a time. A thousand percent, yes. We got to bring Noah. We got to convince <laughs> Noah oh, to come <laughs> to our fancy. That water. will end in a stranglehold. <laughs> <laughs> what is this fucking water? <laughs> Admit you're a liar. Admit it. Okay. Um, <laughs> Do you have anything in a TDS that is higher than 7,400? I just That's really... The maximum I've got, of I've that I've got scale. cancer and I'm looking for a cure. Could you Absolute mix... 7,400. Um, it's just pure magnesium. You eat it. <laughs> yes. It's just a chunk of magnesium. It's a piece of magnesium. <laughs> Lick it. Lick it. <laughs> Swallow this you refrigerator have... magnet. It's water now. <laughs> you have to lick the magnesium over and over. <laughs> All right, let's and then see. and then you sprinkle the salt on your hand. <laughs> yes. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright twenty twenty. All rights reserved.